K, ShadowAnyone.com. Uh, last week I promised you that I would teach you a little uh, tip about making an apprehension. Just a little sliver of that big picture thing. I am going to unpack it a little bit here and talk more about than just about that one little tactic and talk about the big picture of it as well. Uh, the reason I'm doing the driving thing here is because uh, is because I ran out of time and I promised you that I would get this video up so I'm, gonna, I'm filming it here while I'm driving. Uh, so, when it comes to making apprehensions, let me say right now at the beginning, I am not a doctor. I don't know nothing about medical stuff related to this. I'm not an attorney. I'm not offering any kind of legal advice. I'm just going to tell you what I've done that's worked for me in the past. Now, here's the thing. When you make apprehensions, and if you make them regularly, say, in, in the law prevention world, you're going to see uh, some repeat type things that come up over and over again. And most of your apprehensions are going to be very uh, vanilla. Not that they're not dangerous or they can't turn on you, but, but you know, they're going to just bow their heads, they give up, they recognize you caught me, and they come back in. My experience, some won't. But, you know, of course some won't. But my experience, about one in five uh, will resist, run, fight, flee. Uh, so, when that happens, and let me also say, a lot of times it's not the professionals that will fight you. That will, you know, they they are resigned to the fact that this is just part of the business, and uh, this is the part of the business, and I'm going to get pinched every now and then. Uh, what you're going to run into is the amateurs who want to fight you uh, as they get scared. Uh, and uh, the drug addicts, the crackheads, the heroin addicts, the people who need to get a fix and they're, and they're shoplifting uh, or stealing for a fix. Uh, the professionals know, and here's, here's what it is, if you don't know this, they're going to get they're going to get stopped by a store detective, laws prevention, uh, and they don't care. A lot of stores don't prosecute. So they're counting on the fact that probably you're not going to prosecute them anyway. You're just going to tell them what to come back. Even if the store does prosecute, they're going to continue doing what they do. This is their profession. And when they get five, six uh, different uh, thefts against them, you know, eventually they'll get pulled in on an outstanding warrant for this. When they do, they're going to spend the overnight in jail. They're going to go before the judge, and they're going to accept the plea deal that something like, I will plead guilty to one of these thefts if you drop the other five. The judge will accept this plea deal. They'll give them 180 days in jail, 179 days suspended. They'll have credit for that one overnight they did, and like a year's probation, and they're back to shoplifting as soon as they leave the court. It's not a big deal. Um, so they, you know, the professionals don't tend to fight so much. Uh, but when you do, it goes to the ground, and almost always, I mean, with rare exception, you're going to be on the ground on this person, uh, or over the hood of a car, or over a countertop, and what you're going to hear them say, they're going to play every card that they can, and the one that they're going to play, you're going to hear it is, I can't breathe. Okay. My response to that every time, all the time, has always been, I don't care. Now, I do care. I care immensely whether or not they can breathe. Um, their safety and well-being, you know, my life, my future is tied up a great deal in their safety and well-being. Uh, and not to mention, you know, I'm not out to hurt anybody. You know, who wants to hurt people? Like, I'm not the jury. You know, they're going to get their sentence. It's not for me to inflict punishment on them. So, uh, I do care whether or not they can breathe. But here's the rule of thumb that I follow. If you can breathe, you can talk. Okay? If you can talk, you can breathe. So if they're telling me they can't breathe, they can breathe. Uh, now, I, I've been in apprehensions with uh, where cops were there, and the cops will, will say that. It, it's very common. I, I hear it every time I'm with a cop, and this comes up, the cop will say, if you can talk, you can breathe. I don't believe in doing that. The talking is a tell. It tells me that they can breathe. Anytime you, have, you know the tell on a person, uh, you don't tip it to them. If you know when a person scratches their face and they're lying, you don't tell them that because they'll stop scratching their face. If you know any any kind of tell. So, uh, I don't 
give them the heads up. And as long as I hear them talking, complaining, trying to convince me of something, I know that they're breathing. And that's important. So, that's that little tip on how I handle that objection when I'm making an apprehension. If you, uh, if you want a little bit of behind the scenes information here, I will tell you uh, at my blog, if you're watching this anywhere but the blog, uh, go to the blog, shadowanyone.com, and check out uh, what's written below this video, and I will tip to you where I'm going and why it's important to you, why it matters to you. Uh, so go to the blog and look for today's date, which is January 14th, and uh, take a look at where I'm going, why it matters to you. This is Larry K. ShadowAnyone.com. Remember, do the right thing, even if it's the